Hello and welcome to the University of Law. In today's video I'm doing a review and unboxing of this recent 8th Doctor release, What Lies Inside. It's been a long time since I've done one of these because I didn't have any physical big finish on pre-order um, during October. So the first time since September I've done one of these. So I've not opened it yet, it arrived on the doormat this morning. What's great is it's our first 8th Doctor story since his triumphant return in Power of the Doctor, um, in the brilliant Power of the Doctor um, last month. Which, interestingly, was actually his first ever um, televised episode because he's only ever done a Minnesota and a TV movie before. So I know it was kind of a feature length, but it was the first, technically, his first appearance in a TV episode. So that's wonderful to kind of see that for um, our beloved Eighth Doctor. Also, I didn't mention in a previous video, or I was meant to, that um, I think Power of the Doctor has had the most Doctors in a single episode ever. Because uh, we had the um, first, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, eighth, fugitive, thirteenth, and then the fourteenth at the end, and technically the fifteenth if you count the trailer. So, quite a few doctors. But that aside, let's dive into what lies inside. So I have listened to this already on the download. The title, "What Lies Inside," I think what it refers to, and obviously there'll be spoilers in this interview, but I think what it refers to is the fact that. Nothing is quite as it appears on the outside in both of these separate independent stories um, contained in this box set. They promise it would be standalone, and it really is. You know, you it really doesn't make much reference to what they've just experienced in Stranded. So it's a lovely jumping on point. I'm looking forward to getting the next volume next month because I'll be able to do a video where we can join the faces here. And I believe the symbol of Gallifrey here as well, which would be quite fun. So let's get this open. This is always the bit I find tricky. Let's give it a go. Almost there. With the amount of these that I buy, I really should be better at buying these. Opening these are really embarrassing. Right, well, while I'm trying to open that, so the first story in it, which is Parrots of the Daleks, was a really fun story. And what I loved about it was the fact that in the publicity for it, I think there was quite a few um, red herrings placed so that we'd think that it was going to be about one thing when in fact it was about something else and it really made those here we go made those surprises um even better for it so um yeah as you can see here's the slip cover that i've managed to get off with the gallifrey symbol on the back we've got paradox of the daleks by john dawny a two hour story two episodes long and the dalby spook a one part by lauren rooney and Stuart Pringle, directed by the wonderful Ken Bentley, who's done a lot of these um, Eighth Doctor stories of late. Right, so let's get it up. We've got the same artwork front and back. Yes, yeah, so actually, let's get this book closed and let's have a quick look. So they were recording from uh, home. Obviously, we've got, um, if you watch Sherry Adventures, it's uh, Maria's dad in that first story so paradox of the daleks so it's on disc one here they're stranded if you haven't got those already they're a great listen i might do a video on them recently uh, not recently uh, soon actually and then we've got disc two so episode two of paradox of the daleks yeah so let's start with this story so as i was saying yes so i think it was made out a lot in in um, sort of things like twitter and vortex to be kind of a a precursor to the time war and indeed there is a kind of there is a question that hangs over the ending as to whether the Time War has been an influence on this story. However, it's a red herring because there's quite a few twists. And the the fact is, for most of the story, it's not actually the Daleks. They're not facing the Daleks. And the paradox isn't the Daleks' paradox. I was thinking by the title and the Time War element that it was going to be the Daleks' first foray into the Time War, that they were doing some kind of paradox time experiments to, to begin their temporal war. That's not the case at all. The paradox has actually been created by the Doctor and his friends. They find themselves lost in their own paradox. It's a really wonderful, clever story. And just the more you listen, and it, <laughs> I must listen to it again, but it is just the more you listen to it, the more engaging it is. And it's it's similar to Eve of the Daleks. It has that sort of, sort of the same feel, but... It's um, it, it, there is a comedy element to it, but it, it's really timey wimey, and it's just a really fun story. But it's clever without being too clever for its own good. Um, it's a clever story in its own right, and it's not trying to be anything more than what it is. It's a really solid, fun, intellectual, engaging story. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think the other thing as well is there's a quite a lot of um. 
clearly the all is not as it seems as they arrive. And the more you listen, the more you kind of peel back. I didn't see any of the, the, the twists coming right until the end. I saw none of the twists coming at all, which is just a really good, clever story. Um, and there keeps being this hint that there's like a Time Lord behind. So you think, oh, OK, well, maybe it's the Time Lords behind this. Maybe this is a Time Lord station. These people who are working here, a little bit like in... Um, what's that story called? A little bit like in... I'm sure it was either Doom Coalition or... Um, no, it wasn't. It was in um, Ravenous in towards the end of the box set. Like... Um, an outpost that doesn't seem to be Time Lord run, but actually the Time Lords are running it from behind the scenes. And it's similar with the Rage of the Time Lords box as well. So I thought maybe the Time Lords are behind this experiment, so this is going to be a part of that sort of arms race for the Time War. So because you're expecting the Time Lords to be involved with the Daleks from the Time War, when you find out who the Time Lord is, who's pulling the strings, and I won't, I won't give that bit away, but it, you really won't see it coming. So it's a really wonderful, wonderful story. So as always with John Dorney, just thank you. Brilliant story. And then we've got the Dalby Spook, which I definitely need to listen to again. I think it will benefit from a repeat uh, listen. There's the Charlotte Pollard box set, which I'd recommend as well. Um, based on a kind of a semi-true um, story. And yeah, as, as we're both, it's just nice to have a couple of fun, standalone, eight of the stories that we haven't had in a while. And it's just wonderful to hear Paul McGann rem reminiscing about the Isle of uh, Man in the extras. But yeah, another solid, fun story that... You know, after all these big long nights, which I really enjoyed, it, it as I said in the extras, it is just nice just to have a standalone bit of fun. And long may it continue into the next box set. So that's my review of those two stories. The particular favourite is the Dalek one, but then again, Daleks are always going to, um, you know, reign supreme. But those no, two solid stories, a definite recommend. Definitely go and listen to that one. What did you think? Did you enjoy what lies inside? What was your favourite story? What were your favourite moments? from the box set what are you looking forward to out of volume two coming out next month let me know in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe i look forward to speaking to you soon